This is a once in a lifetime offer of my recently published books in all formats. Please take advantage of these discounts by adding these books to your personal library and be sure to share some of them with your friends and family. Thanks. Fuios is a compilation of four books written by Blake Higginbotham over the past 10 years. It is also a legacy message that will serve to help his sons discover the purpose for which they were born. Please note that this is a special edition book and it is available in all formats, including hardback, paperback, digital and audio. Enjoy! All of Blake's books can be purchased at booksbyblh.me or booksbyblh.xyz. Hello, this is Blake Higginbottom with Home Family Gathering. You are cordially invited to join with us on our Saturday call. If you'll contact me from the website below and send me your contact information, I'll be more than happy to add you to the notification list. Again, this is Blake Higginbottom, and we are looking forward to connecting, communicating, corroborating, and collaborating with you. Have a blessed day. What I've got for you today is something Holy Spirit spoke to me early on. There's been a lot of talk about this topic. And um, to be honest with you, some of it's been, you know, limited understanding. Some of it has been over-exaggerated. Some of it has been foolishness. Let me just let me just go ahead and, and share with you some of the some of the teachings I've heard about the uh the um priesthood of believers. Uh, Everybody's everybody that's born again of the spirit is a priest uh, because they're a believer. And so uh, we don't need uh, the fivefold ministry. We don't need uh, the ministry gifts. We don't need uh, any structure. We don't need any leadership. And that's just foolishness. Uh, I wish you were a priest starting in your own home, first of all. I wish you were a priest everywhere you went. And uh, eventually we'll understand that uh, the priesthood of believers that we represent is we're priest unto him, first of all. Not just priest representing him, but priest unto him, first of all. And our altar, the altar that we build, will be an altar of praise and worship and prayer unto him, ministering to him before we attempt to minister to someone else. And so, yes, I believe in the priesthood of believers but I don't believe some of the things that have been propagated in that, uh, let's just say, under that banner or topic. I've also heard people say that we're priests and kings, and they've emphasized the king's part of it. But what they understand is the king's part of it is uh, it's okay for me to imbibe alcohol and smoke cigars because that's what kings do. Kings drive big fancy cars and wear wear big fancy clothes and and uh, you know, have a room uh, closet full of shoes and blah, blah, blah. So living like a king was the emphasis rather than living like living like a humble priest uh, ministering unto the Lord and uh, and doing the Lord's work, so to speak. Uh, we we acted like we were all that in a bag of chips. Have y'all encountered this? Don't unmute yourself. Just, you know, behind <laughs> behind your camera, wave at me. So a lot of that is uh is is I'm I'm going to debunk it today and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and uh, expose some things today. Uh, living living like a king does not necessarily involve imbibing alcohol and smoking cigars. I want to talk to you about being a kingdom of priest, a kingdom of priest. So now then, if you will indeed listen to my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. Whose is it? For all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. <laughs> you shall be to who? To me. The Lord sang, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. That's found in Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 
through 6, and I was reading out of the Legacy Standard Bible. This is what Holy Spirit spoke to me during the time he was giving me this word to share with you. Until we become servants of all, we will not fully rule and reign in life by Messiah Yahshua. Until we become servants of all, we will not fully rule and reign in life by Messiah Yahshua. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him and said, and with her sons bowing down and making a request to him, and he said to her, What do you wish? And she said to him, Command that your kingdom, command that in your kingdom, these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right and one on your left. Now, you can't blame a mother for trying to look out for her sons and wanting the best for her sons, so don't blame her. But listen to what Jesus answered and said. You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? And they said to him, we are able. And he said to them, my cup you shall drink. But to sit on my right and on my left is not mine to give. He referred to the authority that he was under his father, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. Now remember, this entire setting is prior to the impaling pope, death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension. And so when I say that what he was saying is accurate, uh, it's not necessarily something that is prepared for one or two people or for even a small group of people because we're all presently seated in heavenly places in Messiah Yeshua. If so be, we've been born again of the Spirit and entered into sonship and understand at that level. And that's after, this was pre, now post, post uh impaling post, death, burial, and resurrection ascension. It's a different scenario, but this is true what he was saying. So don't go back and say, well, this must be, there's something contradictory about this because over here in Paul's writings, it said something different. He just basically said, for, he said, that's something that, that that's really going to be up to the father. That's above my pay grade at this point. And hearing this, the 10 became indignant with the two brothers. Well, they <laughs> They, they they shouldn't have been indicted with the two brothers. It was mama trying to take care of the boys, you understand? But they became indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over, and their great men exercise authority over them. It is not the way among you. But, whoso, but whoever wishes to be great, when the Greek word is magus, whoever wishes to be to become great or magus among you shall be your servant, and whosoever wishes to be first, protos in the Greek, among you shall be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, how many of you would have liked to have been the sons of Zebedee, James and John, uh, whose mother was trying to look out for them? And uh, Yahshua asked you if you were able to drink of the cup he was about to drink of and them saying, uh, we are able. And he said, well, you indeed will drink of that cup. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody on this call that would be ready to drink of that cup. Of course, that's found in Matthew. The whole story is found in Matthew 20, verses 20 through 28 in the Legacy Standard Bible. Again, great in the this particular verse of Scripture is magus, primary root word, great, large, all the more, big, completely fierce, great, great boast, greater, greater things, greatest, greatly, great men, great things, grown, grown, high, huge, large, larger ones, largest, largest of the garden plants and form, forms of and forms of large, long time, loud, mighty, more important, older, older, uh, one greater, perfectly, severe, stricter, strong, surprising, terribly, too much, very wide. That's all the word megas or great in this particular verse means. But Yahshua said, if you're going to be megas in the kingdom, you're going to be a servant. Everybody say servant. Servant leaders. And first is protos, 
course, it comes from the root word 4253. It means first, chief, before, best, first, first importance, first man, first one, first part, first things, first time, first of all, foremost, leading, leading man, leading men, and previous. So you put great and first together in the same verse. And he says, you're not going to lord over them like the Gentiles, and you're not going to exercise authority over them. But yet we have people in the fivefold ministry that believe that very thing. They represent a hierarchy and a hierarchical form of government that believes they're supposed to be in some way in authority over. I want to encourage those of you who've thought that way and you've met people who think that way to encourage them to go back and read Matthew 20, 20 through 28 again. If you're going to be Magus and Protos in the kingdom, you're going to be a servant. Oh, Brother Blake, we've got this thing backwards. You know, there's still that that uh, hierarchical form of government in clergy laity separation in the institutionally controlled religious system. No, no, saints. It's not just in the institutionally controlled religious system. It's most everywhere you go with everybody you've met. Now, listen to me. It's going to take a process for Yahweh to work this out of us. Do you understand <laughs> that we are going to have to allow his the, his Holy Spirit to perform spiritual surgery to cut out some of this nonsense that religion has taught us. Oh God, how much more process do I need to be? How much more do I need to go down? How far is down? But you are a chosen family, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. Peripoiesis is in the Greek, peripoiesis, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter 2 verses 9 in the Legacy Standard Bible. Possession denotes ownership right here. You are God's own possession. You're God's own possession, but pero listen, Peripoiesis is the Greek terminology means safekeeping, acquisition, obtain, obtaining, possession, preserving. We're something very precious and very dear to him. For you are Yahweh's own peripoiesis, safekeeping, acquisition, obtaining, possession, and preserving. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of the priestly, of priestly work. Everybody say, of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others that the night and day difference he made for you. That's in the message translation of the scripture, if you're wondering. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him to tell others of the day of the night and day difference he made in you. Yahweh is raising up a kingdom of priests who are servant leaders, and they will fully rule and reign in life by Messiah Yahshua. They are a chosen family, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. They are Yahweh's own people for safekeeping. That's my paraphrase of the above passage of scripture. Now listen to this in the TPT translation. But you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light, and now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. Read the following passage of scripture with this in mind. The book of Revelation is about, listen, the revelation of Messiah, and John made it clear that they must take place soon. I assure you in the mighty name of Yahshua to read Revelation 1.1 1, 1 and the rest of the chapter with this in mind, that the book of Revelation is about the revelation of Messiah, and John made it clear that they must soon take place. And he made, listen to this, and he made us a kingdom. <laughs> and he made us a kingdom. He made us into a kingdom. Priest to his to his God and Father. To him be glory and the dominion forever. 
and ever. Amen. Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And I was reading out of the New American Standard Bible 2020. And then listen, this is the, the quote. Remember, I told you early on that Yahweh speaks to me in quotes, quips, thoughts, and musings many times. And this was the quote he gave me before speaking to me about this word. Until we become servants of all, we will not fully rule and reign in life by Messiah Yahshua. Thank you for visiting us today. You're always welcome. Until next time, this is Blake Diggett, by the way, with Home Family Gathering. You can find all of my books and music at booksbyblh.me and musicbyblh.me. Again, thank you for listening. Home Family Gathering is a listener-supported ministry and we appreciate your support. Apostolic Kingdom Alliance and Blake Higginbottom are supported by the generous contributions of friends and family. We are grateful for your continued support in the ongoing work of Apostolic Kingdom Ministry. Thank you.